Hello, hello, and welcome back to Liar. We're in the throne room. I think we're still talking to Kadaj. Don't exactly remember, but we'll get there. Kadaj suddenly takes him by the arm and brings him to a secluded corner of the room, uh, being, yeah, bringing his tone to a, hus a hissing whisper. Okay. I don't want to see a Richter sw uh, swinging by his neck or losing it. He loosens his grip on Lyle's arm and lowers his head. Oh, Lyle sees a look of doom appear on it. Yeah, appear on his expression. I'm not entirely sure you know how these things work, but this doesn't look good for him. Or you. I know that, and I'm pretty sure I know how these things work. Lyle is slowly getting more and more annoyed as the conversation continues. Have you ever participated in a trial? No. Have you ever witnessed a trial? I've witnessed one, but it wasn't for anything big. Kadaj, uh, maybe Kadaj is right. He might not, he might not be prepared for this after all. So you understand how quick something like this can be. They're never quick. This one will be. He was found at the scene of the crime, in almost impossible circumstances. Accused of killing a king. Not to mention, he's not of noble blood. If it wasn't for your, his rank, he would have most likely been killed on the spot. He's right. Uh, Lyle recalls the night uh, when Bo Bjorn, Bjorn, Bjorn uh, tried to kill Richter. Uh, sometimes he forgets how important blood is. Not to mention his foreign status. If he was a common castle servant or a run-of-the-mill guard, then it wouldn't be that big of a problem. His status makes this ten times worse. I like to think he didn't do it, but even if he's innocent and found guilty, a liar will still, will still end up executing a foreign ambassador. And depending on where this goes, it could lead to all-out war. If he did do it, then it means something worse. He didn't do it. This escapes from Lyle's mouth like a growl, surprising even him. Believe what you want, but that won't help him. No, I know, but he didn't. I just know it. So that leaves me. That's not what I was implying. I just... I'm sorry, am I interrupting something? Leaf walks up next to Lyle, looking up to the two of them with a curious gaze. No, I... No. Sir Reed and I were just talking about Lord Richter. Leaf dons an annoyed expression. Yes, I'm sure everyone is. He returns to Lyle. Can I borrow you for a moment? Both Leaf and Lyle look to Kadaj. Do you mind? No, it's quite all right. There will be plenty of time to talk later. He swiftly turns to, to Leaf and nods. Lord Leaf. Leaf's eyes light up for just a moment, and, Ly yeah, and Lyle can tell he's flattered. Actually, it's just Leaf. <clears throat> as, you, as you please. <clears throat> oh, God. I'm not choking on something, it's fine. Uh, he looks to Lyle. I hope to speak with, <clears throat> I hope to speak with you all again, uh, soon, Sir Lyle. Sure. With that, Kadash turns around and walks off towards the front of the throne room. Leaf takes Lyle by the paw and leads him over to another corner of the room. Lyle has a hunch over his, hunch over a bit, but follows behind. Lyle, I hadn't had a chance to say this, but I'm really sorry about everything that happened. I know that our king was like a father to you, and he was a dear friend to me for a very long time. His little gloved wing is still uh, gripping Lyle's paw. Not only that, but our friend from Iron is accused of being the killer. Lyle can tell that his voice is a bit weak. What I'm trying to say is that I know how you feel. And our poor prince is in a lot of pain because of all of this. He puts a... He, he pulls on Lyle's paw and brings his face closer to him. 
so please refrain from speaking about these things in public. This is probably the most worked up Lyle has ever seen Leaf. He puts a paw on... He... Wait, he lets go of his paw and relaxes his body a bit. All right, I'm sorry. Why shouldn't I? Because right now we need to keep things a bit under control. He lowers his voice in a, uh, to a soft, the softest whisper. Lyle has to lean in to hear him, even with the enhanced hearing. If anybody hears about these little conversations, word will spread. Public opinion will be a huge determinant in uh, the, the something like this. And we can't have this something, this situation delve into more chaos than it already has. Do you understand what I'm saying? I suppose. You need to keep a low profile. Feel free to, uh... Yeah, feel free to ask questions to, uh... Wait, to those who... Wait, to those you truly trust. And try to stay away from gossip and rumors. Oh, it wasn't like that. As much as I don't feel... I don't uh, personally trust Kadaj, especially at the moment. He wasn't trying anything like that. It's small, but I get the feeling that he was... That he wants to prevent Richter's head being on the pike. A spike. Either that, or he just wants the, wants the peace that he's always preaching about. Nor both. Leaf shuffles slightly. This is why I wanted to talk to you in private later. I think I may have found something. Something that has to do with, with Richter. I want to show you it. I'll show it to you first, though. What is it? Leaf grips his uh, little wing, his little wings together tightly. I can't talk about it here. Well, Lyle crosses his arms with a uh, pa wait, impatient look on his face. He doesn't think that he doesn't think this things uh, had to be this private. Okay. I'll head straight to your study after this. I got it. All right. Goodbye for now. We'll leave scuttles, 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 uh, off to the, off to the crowd of people and takes his place at the front. Given his height, it makes sense. Uh, Lyle goes to take his place in the crowd, yet he overhears something from a group of people, an old lord talking to another man of a similar, of similar qualities. From what I heard, he was assigned to the traitor as a bodyguard by King Raynor himself. A glorified servant, if you ask me. It can't be that bad, can it? Yes, well, it grew to be something more than that. Lyle slows, uh, slowly walks up to the man, his paw still resting on his dagger. According to the rumors, they've been, they've become something like, a bl wait, blasphemous lovers. Honestly, I sometimes wonder why he, he was given the rank of captain in the first place. Damn. The first noble turns around with a, a smarmy grin on his face. The second and third already saw Lyle approaching and quickly averted their gaze with embarrassed, embarrassed expressions. I couldn't help, I couldn't help but overhear you speaking ill of Lord Richter, and myself. Die. The fact that Richter is in a cell won't stop me from letting him, letting him fight his own battles. But you've also insulted me. I would advise. I'd advise you not to talk about things you know nothing about. Unless you wish to fight the one whom you spoke so rudely. The man grumbles to himself and straightens his jacket. Please! The lord you speak of isn't even a lord. And despite your rank, you're a northern bumpkin from a dying family. I wouldn't be through. But I wouldn't be throwing your strength around if I were you, Lord Reed. It's Captain Reed to you. And I'll defend myself against anybody who speaks behind my back like a coward. My allegiance is, the, is to this kingdom and its people. But I will not bow to the likes of you. With that, he turns around and walks away. One of the idiots say, one of the idiots says something, but he doesn't listen. Uh, they can have the last word if they want, but he's not going to stoop to that to their level. He knows that uh, his that this completely goes against Leaf's advice, but uh, he's not just going not just going to let people get away with stuff like that. 
he still has pride. If they want to gossip about him or Richter, they better make sure he's out of earshot. Lyle moves up a bit more, a little, a little bit more toward uh, toward the center of the room and stands to, stands in front of a tall, uh, excuse me, a uh, bull and bear. He doesn't want to block anyone's view. After uh, after about a minute of waiting, the noise begins to calm down. Everyone in the hall is silent, aside from the few whispers. A uh, Lyle can see Liz standing off to the side of the throne. Her silhouette is bathed in a golden glow. Across from her is somebody in someone in a green robe. Uh, they're holding a small pillow, and on it sits the crown, Rainer's crown. It's probably yeah, it's probably a been fit to Adris's head, but it's definitely still the same crown. It's been passed down th through the Ozian family for as long as anybody knows. As the door opens at the right side of the room and stands there, uh, and there stands Adrius. His face is dull and emotionless, like a statue. He is also wearing a gaudy cloak that Lyle remembers hearing about. It's a wool cloak of a green color. Uh, the uh, collar is adorned with a pur with purple feathers, and the inside is lined with purple fur. This is a ceremonial cloak that all kings wear when they are crowned. He is accompanied by two guards, who walk him up to the throne and then depart. Adrius slowly turns around to the crowd. All eyes are upon him and everyone is silent. The musicians... Wait. Yes. The musicians have begun, have already begun to play their a symphony and it fits the hall with an angelic fills the hall with an angelic noise the uh, the suspense um flows out to the audience uh, like a wave <clears throat> as they wait for Adrius to speak i do not wish to be here uh, standing how did i do Adrius before i don't remember uh, standing before all of you on this day he pauses shortly into his speech Oh, sorry, give me one moment. Let me adjust the audio slightly. There we go. His, boy, his voice is a bit shaky, and yet he continues. By the day, but the day has come, and I cannot lie by saying that I had not prepared for this. Every prince has this responsibility put on them since the day they are born. It terrifies us. It haunts us. And yet we endure. Not for our sake, but our, or our fathers. For the for the sake of the people. Our people. He gestures off to the side in the direction of the castle town. Today I speak for the pride of Lyre. The pride of the kingdom and, and its people. History has finally crossed paths with destiny. And we as a kingdom must band together at, as one. To ensure our survival and to take control. He clenches his fist with determination. Liz is looking up him proudly, and everyone is in the crowd is particularly hold, is practically holding their breaths. I have but one dream, one goal to strive behind. It is a promise to myself and of a sacred vow to all of you. I will not lead you astray. I will take action, and there will be no compromise. We will not buckle, break, or yield in the face of those who mean to put us down. We as a kingdom will dig our hooves in and push back. You will give me all you have, and in return, I will give you everything. His voice wavers a bit, but he continues going. But he keeps going, that is what I've said. I will ensure that our kingdom prospers, and I will make no excuses. I am not a man of hollow promises. This is my vow. I, Adrius Ozian, son of Reiner Ozian, swear before the lands of Tigran and all of their splendor that I will leave this kingdom greater than I found it. Let the higher gods bear witness. We will persevere. After taking a moment of pause, he looks down and nods to the person in the cloak. They begin to uh, speak to, uh, toward him in a soft voice that somehow echoes throughout the hall. Adrius Ozian, son of Rainer Ozian and Elena Ozian, rightful ruler of the Lyrian uh, throne, 
Do you proclaim today that you will protect the people of Liar and guide them toward a better future? Are you prepared to follow, to follow and fulfill the responsibilities of a true monarch by keeping the peace, holding the law, and, and uh, miss the administrating justice? There's a short pause before he, before he uh, confirms. I will. The hooded figure slowly t uh, holds out the pillow. Liz steps forward and takes the crown. She raises it up to um place on his to place on his head. I now pronounce the king, a uh, pronounce you King Adrius, Ozian, ruler of Lyre, and one of the Holy Triad. The crown is placed uh, upon the head, and Liz steps back. May his rule be long and prosperous. The throne room erupts with applause. Lyle claps along with them, but notices something. Adrius could rarely be um, caught in a good mood, but an even rarer occurrence was to see him cry. There were no tears that would be shed after witnessing something beautiful, nor, nor were they tears of a proud leader. They were not tears of joy. He seems to be doing all right. Part two, Adrius. Oh, okay. The rest of the day moves by uh, dreadfully slow. Adrius sits on his father's throne, uh, still and uncomfortable. He knows that he belongs here, but he doesn't feel right. It's been his destiny since he was born, but achieving it in this way was not how he wanted it. He looks around the room, his eyes dancing around at the people yeah, at the uh, people that uh, fills it. A uh, leave, a uh, leaves slowly. Wait, le oh, that's okay. <laughs> like the like the objects, like the tree th things. Yeah, uh, leaves uh, slowly fall down from the overgrown trees above the land among the crowd. Some of them he recognizes from the village, uh, business owners and shopkeepers. Uh, some of them are uh, wealthy traders. Everyone else is just uh, noble lands and wait, lords and ladies from the rest of Lyre. Uh, their extra wait, extravagant uh, designs on their clothes uh, contrast the uh, muted color scheme that uh, seems to be so popular with this part of the land. The crafty feline from Dryer sticks out like a sore thumb amongst the crowd in his bright green cloak. It's not hard. Uh, it's not hard to though. Among, almost half of the room is now empty by now. A nobles come up to the throne one by one and wish him a long and prosperous rule, shaking his hand and bowing. He'd uh, say he enjoyed this bit of, uh, wait, this little bit of social interaction, but right now that's the last thing he wants. The amount of emotions he's been keeping bottled up these past two days have been taking a toll on him. Or right now he just wishes he could be alone. To his right is Elizabeth. She's le uh, leaning against one of the walls, arms uh, down by her side with a dull expression upon her face. Even Adrius could never understand why she looked, why she always looked so bored with everything. As she notices his, wait, she notices him glancing in her direction and approaches. Is something wrong? Isn't it obvious? Adrius. And she somehow manages to throw him a look of both understanding and irritation at the same time. I apologize. No, it's okay. I know you've been through a lot lately. It's not that. I'm just tired of being surrounded by all these people. He leans toward her. Forgive me, but I'm not in the best state of mind right now. And that's okay. I understand how these things can be a bit emotionally draining. If you want, I can take over from now. Almost everyone is gone now, and the after party will start in a bit. It's best for you, and prepare for that. That's true. He adjusted the crown on his head. It was uh, pro professionally fitted to him, uh, but it's still a bit big. I suppose I could let you take over. But I don't think there's really much to do from here. If I were to stay, I would probably just be... It would, it would just be me sitting here, watching as everyone talks with each other. 
He stands from the throne and rests his hand on his on the armrests. All right. I'm going to end the part here, everyone. So I will see you around. <laughs>